She was a model employee. She was kind of considered to be the superstar of our organization. She was a respected colleague. She was a role model for me, and I, I aspired to be like her. Her name, Ana Belen Montes. And she was a Cuban spy. The Defense Intelligence Agency makes its living learning secrets. Good analysts are ever alert for subtle clues. They trust their instincts to send them in the right direction. Their internal radar always scanning for leads and deceptions. Ana Montes was a good analyst and an even better deceiver. She almost deceived them all. I hired Ana Montez back in the mid-1980s. Uh, she came in, she was finishing up her master's degree at Johns Hopkins, had a bachelor's degree from the University of Virginia, looked extremely qualified, very intelligent. Ana Montez seemed like the perfect hire, and she lived up to the promise of her resume. She quickly won the respect of her peers within the U.S. intelligence community as a Latin American analyst. She was an outstanding analyst. She was a phenomenal writer, extremely prolific, uh, typically producing about two to three times as much as the average analyst. There was simply nothing about her that raised any red flags. Her security record was spotless, no indications of security infractions or security violations. She lived modestly uh, within her means, and in short, she displayed none of the typical behaviors we associate with espionage activity. Even those close to Anna found no reason to be suspicious. Fellow analyst Steve Smith shared a double cubicle with Anna for more than five years. He never imagined she lived a double life. In the time that I knew her, I didn't see anything that brought to, to my mind a suspicious thought about Ana Montes. I really thought she was loyal, highly professional, and I don't think there was any single incident, not even a single incident that I could point to that would have, that would have driven me to, to, to think that maybe there's something, something wrong here. Lourdes Talbot worked with Ana for years and may have known her best. I came in as an undergraduate through a program in DIA and I worked my very first summer with her in 1992, and that's when I met her. We worked really closely together in determining what I was going to write as a senior analyst. She, had, she gave me guidance, and, and she taught me how to be an analyst. I always was under her team, so we were very, very close um, in terms of our daily work. Anna's professional stature grew through the years. She continued to rack up honors, the highest marks on performance evaluations, a meritorious promotion from GS-13 to 14, selection for the prestigious Exceptional Analyst Program. She was the first DIA employee selected for the National Intelligence Council's Fellowship Program. She got kudos from all over. She got kudos throughout the intelligence community. One U.S. ambassador in Latin America commented on her saying that she was an outstanding analyst. But if her professional accomplishments were well known, and well-respected. Her fellow employees knew little about her personal life. I would say of the employees who worked for me over the years and the ones who worked for me for a long period of time, I probably knew less about Anna than I did about others. I would describe Anna Montez as socially reserved and very careful about uh, the information that she would share with people.
she was very protective of her personal life um, and very adamant that nobody should ask about her personal life. I was definitely curious about what she did after work and you know how she managed to balance work and, and her home life. But we never interacted outside of the office. Of all Ana Montez's colleagues, one had a special professional relationship with Ana because they both were Cuba specialists. David is in silhouette to protect his anonymity. I first met Ana in 1987 and uh, I was working a project on uh, South America that involved the Cubans and I needed Ana's expertise because she was actually in a different organization and so I, need her, I needed her political military perspective. I interacted with her about every one, one to two weeks and it was kind of a requirement at that time because we had to coordinate our work with each other. As an experienced analyst, David is always sensitive to anomalies. He instinctively takes notice when someone seems to have knowledge or information they wouldn't be expected to have or shows unusual interest in areas outside their job responsibilities or seems involved in things that just don't add up. By the late 1980s, he was picking up some discrepancies in the Latin American intelligence community. For one thing, U.S. intelligence had been unable to run a successful human operation against Cuba for decades. Cuba consistently foiled all attempts. David wondered why Cuba was winning the intelligence game. Were they that much better than the U.S.? Or was someone playing for both sides? We had a lot of information from Cuban defectors that Cuba had spies working within the United States government. What, what caused you know, me concern is that if they had agents within the Department of Defense, uh, what kind of information we were losing, what kind of information they were interested in, and uh, uh, who were those spies? Then something brought the question closer to home. David co-authored an intelligence product that was thought to be compromised to the Cuban government. It seemed Cuba learned of it before it was published, so only someone in the know could have been responsible, someone who knew the Cubans' interests. I knew Anna, and when I saw her involved in a lot of things that the Cubans were interested in, it began to make me quite nervous. And so I had a gut feeling that something wasn't quite right, but I never suspected her of being a spy. Around 1992, Ana Montes began work as a Cuba analyst. She worked more closely with David and saw the products he was working on, dealing with Cuban intelligence against the U.S., and specifically the DOD. I began to see that she was, you know, very much involved in uh, specific events that I was studying, you know, as a counterintelligence analyst. And as a result of that, you know, my my concerns about her began to grow because prior to that time I never had no suspicions of her at all. Soon after, there was another anomaly. In the course of his work, David informed one of Ana Montez's co-workers about a long-term source that was exploited for Cuba-related information. A few weeks later, the source dried up. David now focused more closely on Ana. At that time, I didn't suspect her of being a spy. I just was deeply concerned of the things that she was involved with, and I didn't know what they meant. More than anything, I needed a resolution. I needed to know that Anna, as a coworker, was safe to work with. Over the next few years, David watched Anna closely. Cuba continued to gain inside information about DOD activities. Was Anna somehow involved? In March of 1994, she successfully completed a DIA-administered polygraph test. Her background remained spotless and her credentials excellent. But David's suspicions continued to grow. She was just involved in events okay, that were uh, very suspicious, and I didn't know if she was being targeted. I didn't know if she was directly involved with these things working with the Cubans. Uh, I was looking at it more from the perspective of of security of the information. Two more years passed. Then on February 24th, 1996, David's internal radar picked up a strong hit. 
and he began zeroing in on a target. A Cuban MiG fighter shot down two private aircraft, operated by the Cuban emigre group Brothers to the Rescue in international waters. Three American citizens and one permanent resident alien were killed. It was an international crisis certain to place Cuba in the crosshairs of an American military strike. But the U.S. inexplicably backed down. When David looked into the matter, Ana Montes seemed to be in the middle of it. Ana was aggressively seeking Cuba-related counterintelligence information that seemed beyond the scope of her duties. David could no longer ignore his suspicions. Just not the events that she was involved with. We have the events, plus we have behaviors. She knew I was a counterintelligence analyst, and she couldn't always look me in the eye. She stayed away from me. Okay, immediately that, they came to my attention. Why is she staying away from me? And all of these things are coming together. One plus two plus three plus four. All of that comes together, okay, in a sequence of events that causes concern. David's gut feeling was now strong enough that he felt someone needed to take a close look at Anna's activities. And he knew who to call. DIA's Counterintelligence and Security Office. But bringing himself to make the call was not so easy. There were no definites at all. All I knew was that there was a lot of unusual activity that I couldn't explain. So there was initially ambivalence on my part to bring it to security's attention. But after time, I kept seeing these events occur you know, more often, and it got to a certain point where I couldn't ignore it anymore, and I had to bring it to security's attention. If Ana Montes was doing what David suspected, her actions might have already cost lives and might cost more. He had to take action. Drew Winneberger was in charge of DIA's investigation. It's perfectly natural to feel conflicted about reporting on a coworker. That was a very difficult decision, but what he did was absolutely the right thing to do. He trusted his instincts as an analyst. He didn't wait for hard evidence of uh, Anna's conduct before he reported it to us. And that's what we want people to do. If they have a gut feeling about someone, they should report it to us, and we know how to handle that. The Counterintelligence and Security Office began a discreet investigation, standard operating procedure when an employee reports their concerns. You know, I need my concerns resolved. And uh, security handled my concerns in a very private way. And, uh, kept me anonymous in the process, and uh, to some extent uh, even uh, kept me informed and continued to ask me questions about things. DIA personnel should be comfortable with reporting to the counterintelligence and security office any concerns that they have. Their identity is protected. Their name will not come out as part of the, as part of the investigation. Innocent employees will not be harmed by the investigation. For David, like any other DIA employee, making the call was all he had to do. It's not the job of an analyst or a DIA employee to try to determine whether somebody in the agency is a spy. That's the job of the security people. You need to go to them and let them investigate and find out what's going on. The counterintelligence and security office worked quietly and diligently, collecting information about Ana Montes. The investigation of Anna involved investigative activity within the DIAC, and I think it's noteworthy that virtually no one became aware of this investigative activity. There was literally a handful of people in this agency that were aware of this active investigation. So that should give employees some confidence that we are capable of con conducting a very discreet investigation. The investigation was so discreet that Anna Montez's co-workers never suspected it was in progress. On September 21st, 2001, they were as shocked as Anna when she was arrested at the DIA Inspector General's office at Bowling Air Force Base, Washington, D.C. When it was announced, one colleague actually had to ask what name they said because it didn't even register. Another one broke down emotionally. I know, I actually broke down. It was, wasn't even an issue of disbelief. It was one of those sort of a, well, I can't imagine what else it would be like, but sort of being told someone had died. Uh, suddenly, someone that you hadn't expected to die. 
I was more analytic in my in my thought process when I when it was announced. But then as the days went on, it, it was it definitely turned into more a, of an emotional response. I was definitely sad. I, I did cry. I was I was upset. And eventually it turned to anger. And mostly now it's anger. And when I do hear her name, I, I cringe. I because I did work with her so closely and I did admire her. Anna's arrest was something that was very uh, devastating to the office. We actually saw the grief counselors the next week to try to understand and accept, uh, understand better what was going on, but uh, it was very tough for us. The charge against Anna was conspiracy to commit espionage on behalf of Cuba. And the extraordinary details of Anna Montez's treachery began to emerge. Though her job was to inform the American intelligence community on Cuban operations, she was doing just the opposite. She was revealing to Cuba all she knew about American operatives and operations, from the identity of undercover agents to the details of U.S. military exercises. And of course, every time we discovered something new, I turned around and I said, hey, Anna, guess what we just figured out? Or guess what we just learned? So it was as good as just turning around and sending Fidel Castro a letter. Well, they probably got there faster than a letter would have. The polygraph test in 1994 made her even more dangerous. By deflecting suspicion away from her, she was freer to pursue her espionage. And to pass the polygraph test, she had used a countermeasure taught to her by the Cubans. Ana Montez engaged in secret shortwave radio communications with her agent handler. She used numeric codes, which she deciphered on her personal computer to relay U.S. secrets to the Cuban government. She endangered at least four clandestine U.S. intelligence officers and may have contributed to the deaths of American war fighters. She jeopardized intelligence collection systems that took many years and millions of dollars to develop. Her information was shared by the Cubans with other foreign governments whose interests countered America's. She compromised whatever she had access to, and she had virtually unrestricted access. People trusted you, and our government trusted you. Your colleagues trusted you, your friends trusted you, and you betrayed us all. The, the damage of Anna's actions to my colleagues and the people who work in Latin America uh, intelligence uh, was devastating. Uh, we, we felt like our credibility and all the work we had done for the preceding 16 years had gone for naught. And you can't undo what's been done. In a sense, you can try to adjust some things, but for the most part, you're starting all over again and almost from scratch. Ana Montez made a full confession on March 19, 2002. She admitted that she spied for the Cuban government because she opposed U.S. policy toward Havana. But was that enough to drive Ana Montez to live two parallel lives? By day, a star performer at DIA, and by night, a super spy for Cuba. She told the judge at sentencing that she obeyed her conscience rather than the law. She felt it was her personal calling to protect Cuba, which she believed was victimized by America's abuse. In a plea bargain with the Department of Justice, Ana Montez was sentenced to 25 years in prison, followed by five years of probation, in exchange for her full cooperation and disclosure of her espionage activities. The investigation yielded critical information on Cuban counterintelligence. At DIA, it brought valuable insights to those she had once deceived, and she had almost deceived them all. Frankly, I had no suspicions whatsoever. Uh, I had no suspicions that Anna was involved in spying. Um, I just thought she was a very focused, uh, hardworking employee whose uh, the center of her life was work. Anna said things that Perhaps I should have questioned as an analyst, but I didn't. I mean, I, I, I deferred to her as a senior analyst, and because I didn't think of her as a spy, I never suspected, and you don't think of people as spies, you don't want to question certain information sometimes. Anna was my worst fear. My worst fear was somebody involved in espionage activity that was not displaying any of those indicators. Those were gonna be the individuals that would be very hard to detect. 
and there's where we rely on the workforce to step up and, and report concerns to us. And that was the case with Anna. Would I have known it was Anna Montez? No, uh, but that's not the point. The point is something wasn't quite right, uh, and, it, and it happened more than once. And all I really probably needed to do was to go to my CI analyst. Certainly one of the things that uh, uh, has resulted is that I'm uh, more skeptical about people uh, that I work with. Uh, I don't automatically accept everything at face value. Uh, I tr try to look beyond uh, just the personality that I'm dealing with and uh, occasionally say to myself, why are they doing a certain thing that they're doing? It's definitely affected the lens through which I, I read information and I process it for my own products, but it also has affected the way I, I look at other people and their questions towards me about certain pieces of information. Although Ana Montes was brought to justice, her story is a cautionary tale about a problem inevitable in intelligence work. We would be foolish to assume that Anna was the one and only espionage agent directed at DIA. Uh, we have to be vigilant at all times. That's the message for the employees. Uh, that there is a strong likelihood that there are others engaged in such conduct. And the only way we're going to catch people like this is if employees step forward and report their concerns. If employees here at DIA uh, see anything that's unusual with regard to their, their, their co-workers and those activities upset them, cause them concern, then they should take that information and, and bring it to security and have security resolve the issue. We owe a significant debt of gratitude. Were it not for him stepping forward, it's entirely possible that Anna would be continuing her espionage activities today. For David, it is a bittersweet victory. His role in Anna's apprehension is a proud accomplishment that saved priceless information and perhaps countless lives. And yet, Anna's treachery compromised many years of hard work. The greatest success that I have as a counterintelligence analyst and denial and deception analyst is the arrest and incarceration of Anna. That's my sole success because all the other things that I did in those areas, she compromised.